We'll be getting started here in just a moment. Let's give it one more minute here. <clears throat> All right, welcome. If you're able to hear me, uh, just give me a thumbs up or a check or hearts or whatever they allow you to put. And we'll begin here in just a moment. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> All right, it looks like it is seven o'clock. So let's go ahead and begin. Welcome to Wednesday night prayer meeting. This is uh, prayer meeting number 115. And I'm thankful that you're here with me tonight. My name is Pastor Don. I'm with Altoona First Southern Baptist Church. We're located at 903 North 4th Street, right here in Altoona. And I invite you to visit our uh, historic little church this Sunday. We were founded back in 1911. We are grounded in the Bible. We are passionate about sharing the love of Jesus and serving our community. And so... I uh, welcome you to Wednesday night prayer meeting, and tonight's prayer meeting is going to be just a little bit different. Um, normally, I, I pick a specific topic, and I share um, a scripture, and then we kind of talk about that a bit, the meaning behind it, and, and tonight is a little bit different because um, every week I ask folks who tune in, just like you, uh, if they have questions, if there are stories that they would like to share. And tonight's topic is Ask the Pastor, because I received these letters and these direct messages from people, and I wanted to share one specifically tonight because I feel, um, I don't really feel it, it's, it's, it's the, the Lord's telling me that I think it's going to help um, quite a few of you out there tonight. And so I thought it was fitting uh, that, that we would talk about this specific topic. And I titled tonight's message, Stuck in Regret, Finding Hope When Moving Forward Seems and Feels Impossible. And so I have the letter here. And I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. It's a, it's a short letter. And I'm going to keep the person who sent it anonymous, of course. Um, pastor client privilege. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, it goes like this. It's, uh, Dear Pastor, I'm feeling completely stuck in life. After a painful divorce and two failed relationships, my last one was with someone that I thought I'd spend my life with. But my own doubts my own anxiety, and inability to trust wrecked it. Now I'm struggling daily, burdened with regret, and barely managing to keep going, even though I know God's love is real. I just can't shake the shame of where I am at the age of 50, and it feels overwhelming. How do I find peace and move forward when the pain and the regret are so strong. Again, that was a letter from uh, a friend who listens to prayer meeting every week. 
And so I, I wanted to go ahead and share my response that I had shared with this gentleman. And so I, I opened it this way. Thank you for sharing your heart so honestly. It takes courage. It really does. It takes courage to open up, especially when you're carrying regret, shame, and the weight of feeling stuck. And so, first of all, I want you to know that you are not alone in this. Your struggle, just like those who are listening tonight, the struggle is deeply human. And God sees every part of your journey, every regret, every painful feeling. And sometimes life can seem like one overwhelming wave of what ifs and if onlys. But in the middle of that, I want to remind you of God's steady love and the hope that we find in his promises. And so when I put together this message for this person who reached out, I had shared with him that I'd like to walk with him through some truths that may help with next steps forward because you know um for someone who's going through something like this it's 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 day by day it's it's one foot in front of the other it's just baby steps and so here are some key points that i had shared uh with the listener number one god is still at work in you it's easy to feel that, that we've missed our chance when things in life go wrong. But God's grace means that our story isn't over. And so I encourage you, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 reminds us, He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And so... What that message is telling us, what that verse is telling us, is that God isn't finished with you. God created you. He has a plan and a purpose for you. He isn't finished with you. And so even when life feels like it's falling apart, he's working to shape your heart and faith through the pain and the struggle that you're going through. Number two... Your identity is in Jesus. Your identity is in Jesus, not in past relationships. I mean, it's understandable to feel deep regret when someone you loved no longer sees you the way that they once did, right? But remember this, your value isn't tied to someone else's acceptance or rejection. You are loved fully and completely. By God. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. That's first John chapter three, verse one. Your worth is already secure in Him, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've lost, no matter how difficult or how sad and disappointing things get. Number three is letting go of regret and leaning, I mean lean, into grace. The Bible tells us not to look back. I'm going to say that again. The Bible tells us not to look back. And this writer mentioned battling crippling feelings of great regret. And regret can, you know, it can be like quicksand, you know, it can, it can suck you in, it can, it, it can hold you down. But God offers us freedom from our past through his grace. And in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19, God says, forget the former things. I would write this down. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. 
See, I am doing something new. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? So God invites us. God invites you and me to stop replaying what we can't change in our lives. And instead, open our, our, our hearts to new things that he wants us to do, that he wants us to experience. And so we've got to stop looking back. we got to stop living in the past. we got to stop playing that film in our head of how we were wronged and, and all those negative memories. we got to stop looking behind us and look ahead at what the Lord has for us. Number four is, is trusting God with, a, with an uncertain future. I mean, we just came through an election, right? And things were pretty uncertain for a while. And, you know, it's, it, it's okay to admit that, you know, trusting God feels hard. And, and like, for example, this writer, the, this situation that he was going through when he wrote to me. It's okay to admit that it, that, that it feels hard and difficult to follow God. You know, a lot of people have felt this way. The Christian walk isn't about perfect faith, but about choosing to hold on to God even when faith feels weak. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to repeat that. A lot of people have felt this way. The Christian walk isn't about perfect faith. Okay, but about choosing to hold on to God even when faith feels weak. In Mark chapter 9, verse 24, a man cried out to Jesus, I believe. Help my unbelief. And God honors that kind of honesty. He knows your heart. And he is walking with you step by step by step on your journey, even when you feel stuck, even when you feel that, you know what, I'm going to do this life by myself. I'm going to try to accomplish everything on my own. I don't need to pray. I don't need to give it to Jesus. I'm going to do it all by myself. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. You know, that's why you end up feeling stuck and getting even more stuck and you're in that quicksand and the apostle Paul knew what it was like to feel weak and what it was like to feel frustrated with himself and it, and he shared in 2 Corinthians verse uh, chapter 12 verse 9 that God told him my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness it's okay to feel weak because it's in our weakness that God's full strength, that God's full power shines through. I mean, he doesn't expect you to fix yourself. You know, we, we can't do that. We can't fix ourselves. But instead, he invites you to lean into his grace. Lean into his love. You don't have to navigate this junk alone anymore. And then a, a, another thing that I had shared with this writer who, who wrote to me. Number five is healing takes time. Healing takes time, and that is okay. I mean, it's okay to not be okay right now. You know, healing from, healing from heartache, from broken relationships, from loss of a loved one, loss of a spouse, difficult things, you know, it, it, you know, healing takes time. You know, God's mercies are new every single morning. And he gives you just enough grace to get through each day. You know, you got to keep bringing your brokenness to him. You know, you got to be honest with God. You got to be honest and just... Let them know, you know, Lord, I'm broken. I can't do this without you. And then, you know, trust that over time he will restore your joy. And the Lord, you know, it says in Psalm chapter 34, 
The Lord is close to the broken hearted, hardened, hearted. Sorry. The Lord is close to the broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I'm going to say that again because this verse is, is, is a verse that I keep with me. Because, you know, when you do funerals or when you have direct messages or emails or letters from folks who are going through some difficult stuff, it's good to know that Psalm 34 uh, verse 18 is there. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I mean, that's that that's a powerful statement. And again, I encourage you, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, to spend time in the Psalms, to spend time in Proverbs. You know, you got to look at both of those. Like, I, I, I think it's a good habit to get into to... Look at Psalms and look at Proverbs. Just go and read a few every morning. I, I, I really feel that those will bring um, some great peace, some great comfort to you in what you're going through this evening. Number six is a hope that will not disappoint. I mean, it is understandable to miss the daily companionship that you had in your relationship. Because, you know, God designed you and me. He designed us for connection. And it's hard when that connection is taken away, either by a lost relationship or by a lost loved one. You know, and it's, it, and it's hard when it's taken away, right? But God promises that in him there is hope that will not disappoint Though it feels like your life is over and that you can't go on. And I know this writer that, that I was talking to, um, he felt that he was near suicide. He was felt that he was going through some really bad stuff. And I encourage you, listening tonight, if you feel that way, do not hesitate to reach out to me or to anyone else in our church or to friends or to loved ones or to family members. I mean, because though it feels like life is over now, it isn't. And God can and he will bring you through it. He will bring beauty through the brokenness. You know, and it may look different than what you might have expected or thought about. But it will be good because we all know that he is good, right? And number seven, and this is probably the most powerful one. Number seven is you don't have to walk alone. You will not walk alone. I encourage you to lean into people God has placed around you. You know, God, you know, he, he, the Lord is awesome about stuff like that. Putting people in your life at just the right time, right? There are countless testimonies, I know, even at our church, of, of people who, like, connections were made, and, you know, it was before, and, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing how the Lord puts people at the right place at the right time. Because he knows that you need them, right? And so you don't have to walk alone. And so I encourage you to, to lean into the people that God puts around you. Even though it's hard, you know, maybe like for this story, uh, for this gentleman that I was talking to, you know, his church, you know, she goes to the same church. And so that may be a bit difficult. But you're not meant to carry, you're not meant to carry these burdens alone. You know, while you mourn the loss of that relationship, that companionship, that you've lost, you've got to remember that God is walking with you in your pain. You know, he offers the, you with this love, this great love that is so constant. He's forgiving, he's healing. And if you, and if you need to talk or to pray more, you know, I encourage you to reach out to someone at your church, to reach out to me. You know, God often uses community to bring healing. 
even when it's not easy at first. And so, you know, I'd shared with this person who reached out to me that, you know, I know it feels like you're stuck in a place where the pain just won't let up. But you need to remember this. And I encourage you to remember this. That God is good. That God is God. And that God is the God of resurrection. And that he can and he will bring new life from even the most broken places. Broken people. Keep taking one small step in front of the other. You know, it, you, know you just got to give. I mean, God's on his own time, right? And so you just got to give it to him. And trust that he is holding you even when you can't see a way forward. I mean, I tell you, you are deeply loved. And God is not done with your story. And for this specific person and for you tonight, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, and I'm, and I'm here to walk with you through whatever season you're going through. You know, may, may his peace fill you, fill your heart each day as you take this journey one step at a time. I mean, and that's what it comes down to. You, you, you can't force, you can't rush. you got to give it to the Lord that's in God's time. And, you know, if you don't know the Lord, you know, it, it could be a new beginning with Jesus. And so before we pray tonight, I want to invite you to take the first steps on a journey that could change your life. No matter where you are right this very moment. You know, you could be sitting at home on the couch, on a bus, maybe in your car, on break from work. Um, no matter where you are, you know, whether you're carrying burdens, whether you're facing struggles or you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling like the guy who reached out to me that feels stuck. I want you to know that God sees you. He knows your heart. He loves you deeply. He's not waiting for you to, to, to get everything perfect, everything cleaned up, you know, like, I hear all the time, hey, I'll be at church one of these days, but I gotta I gotta fix up my life first. I gotta clean myself up a bit. It doesn't work that way. We can't do that on our own, right? Our works, nah, that won't work. Instead, we gotta say, Lord, you know what? Fix this. I'm broken. I need you. You know, he, he just wants you to come to him just as you are in the place that you are right now tonight. And this moment, this moment right here can be the beginning of something brand new in your life. You know, I, a friend of mine is searching. Searching and searching and searching and searching this world. You know, trying to do everything and trying to just find that peace and that, you know, all the things that the world, you know, you know all the things that he feels that, you know, the, the world should be giving him, right? And instead, you know, when you're searching for those things, you need to be searching for the peace, the forgiveness, for that meaning. And that's what Jesus offers you. He offers you all of that and more, but you've got to give it all to him. And that relationship starts with a simple, simple little step of just turning away from the things that you've left kind of get into your life. You know, like maybe the devil is speaking on your shoulder tonight. You know, maybe you've stepped back, you've stepped away from people and and you know, you, you're, you're listening to the world, you're listening to um, the devil on your shoulder. You remember those cartoons when you were a kid where there's an angel on one side and there's a devil on the other, you know. I hate to tell you, but spiritual battle is real. It's a real thing. 
and there are a lot of people going through it. So you got to turn away from that. You got to also turn away from those struggles, the, the, the sins, and turn towards Him with an open heart. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 reminds us for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that includes every one of us tonight, right here, right now. But the good news is, you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him shall be saved, shall not perish, but have eternal life. I've said it a few times. I think it's reoccurring. God loves you so much. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to take the punishment for you. He took all of our punishment. He took all those sins on the cross, sins that he's never even heard of. He's there on that cross. He was there on that cross for us, for you, for me, so that we could be free. So how do you take this step? It starts with faith. A choice to trust Jesus with your life. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you declare, if you declare with your mouth, if you say it right now, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And right now, wherever you are, in your car, on a, in a bus, maybe at a library, maybe at school, wherever you are, maybe to a supermarket, listening, I don't know. You could talk to God. It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't have to have the perfect English language vocabulary. Just an honest heart. And just ask him to forgive you. To invite him to come into your life. And to trust him as your Lord and Savior. It's not about trying harder or being perfect. It's about surrender. Letting Jesus... You know, letting Jesus just take your hand and to lead you and to heal you and to fill your life with his peace, with his joy and his purpose. When you invite Jesus into your heart, he promises to never leave you. You're never going to be alone. You'll never walk through life alone again. Every step, every challenge, every struggle, every joy you'll have his presence with you. You know, you just got to let stuff go. You, know, you got to leave. Like I think I saw somebody say you got to leave ego behind. You got to leave things. Turn away from things. You got to repent. And so, if you're ready to, to take that simple step right now, I encourage you, I encourage you right now to pray this prayer with me. Will you join me in prayer right now? Dear Jesus, tonight I want to follow you. I want to turn from my sin and place my trust in you completely. You alone. And ask for your forgiveness. And right now, Lord, I just I, I, I receive your gift of eternal life. And I confess. And shout out loud that you are Lord. Thank you for loving me, for dying for me. Thank you for freeing me from sin, for giving me new life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer no matter where you are this evening, Know that all of heaven is celebrating with you right this very moment. That you've just taken the most important step in this life. Seriously. I mean, yeah, there are lots of important things with job, with families, with all sorts of... But, but the most important thing in your life is having that personal relationship with Jesus. I kid you not. That is exactly where things change. So if you've taken this first step... It is an important step. It's a, it's a step towards a life of meaning, a life of hope, a life of eternal joy with Jesus. And this isn't the end. You know, it, it, it doesn't just, you know, you don't just pray that prayer and all of a sudden, hey, everything's better. Everything's complete. No, it doesn't work that way. It's, it's a journey. 
one day at a time, one step at a time. And if you've made this decision, I encourage you to tell someone. Let us know. Let me know. Send me a message. DM me. Send me a private message. And just remember that this is the beginning. This is the beginning of an amazing story that God has for your life, that God has a purpose for you. God bless you and welcome you to the family of faith. And so, the best part about all this is you don't have to walk this road alone, right? You can connect with other believers at our church, at other churches, dive into God's word. I mean, there are people that, that jump on this prayer meeting that go to different churches. That's awesome because, you know, it's all about it's all about developing and strengthening our walk with Jesus and learning more, right, and growing. And so, you know, let your faith grow day by day. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So no matter what comes your way, Jesus will be with you. He will be guiding you. He will be strengthening you. And he will be giving you peace. And so let's take a moment. I mean, this is prayer meeting. And I want us to pray together. Take a moment to quiet our hearts and to turn to the Lord. And just trusting and his power to move in ways that we don't understand. And as we pray, let's also remember these folks in our heart, our family, our friends, our neighbors, those who need God's touch. And lift them up before him tonight. You know, prayer isn't just words, it's 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 a it's a personal connection with the one who calms the fiercest storms that we face and brings peace that fills you know, every part of our heart, right? I mean, when we pray, you know, I, I say this all the time, when we pray, you know, doors open that were closed, right? We talked about relationships tonight. You know, broken relationships find healing. They mend. You know, strained hearts are restored when you pray. In moments of sickness or or fear, prayer takes that away. Prayer heals. Prayer becomes a channel through which hope is alive and flows. And so even when the night feels long, prayer renews our strength and gives us the courage to keep moving forward, step by step, never stopping, never quitting. And then we you know, I, I talked about timing, you know, God's timing. You know, though we may not get answers right away, God's timing is always perfect. His answers will come just when we need them the most in ways that are better than you and I could ever imagine. And I, and I think it was James, James chapter 5, that says, you know, a prayer of a righteous person is powerful and it's effective. So do not give up. Do not lose heart in what you're praying for. God hears every prayer, every whispered word, every cry. And he is faithful. Keep trusting. Keep praying. God's love is always working, even in ways that we can't see, we can't understand. And so tonight, will you join me in praying for our friends, our family, those who are, are watching tonight. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for another Wednesday night. Lord, thank you for your blessings, for your unwavering goodness, your faithfulness, your protection. You know, glory be to you, God. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you've given to this great nation. Right? Lord, we just lift it up to you. We are so grateful for each new day. And tonight we bring before you our, our beloved church family and our friends who are facing things like financial struggles or issues, uh, 
relationship difficulties, Lord, like we talked about tonight, and, and maybe facing health issues and challenges. You know our hearts, you know our needs, you know our brokenness, and we humbly seek your healing, your comfort, your peace. And Lord, we ask, we lift up tonight John Carter. Lord, show him hope, show him love, your direction, your purpose. And Father, we also lift up Rose Murrow, Lord, who is having some health tests or some hospital medical tests done, Lord, that she just had some MRIs that she completed, Lord, but also there's some, some other things, Lord, and she just keeps moving, Lord. Just give her that energy, give her that strength that she needs, and give the doctors wisdom. And we humbly ask, Lord, that you provide healing and comfort for Tana Byler as she battles cancer, and also for the Piper family, Beth, Cassidy, Adam, and Jacob. And tonight, Lord, we also lift up Peach and her grandson Hazen and her brothers Rod and Woody, both of them who have been struggling and fighting cancer. But Lord, you know, as we all do, that you know what? They're, you know, the cancer has kind of weakened a bit. And we are so, so thankful for that miracle. And Lord, we just ask for healing and comfort for our dear friend Scott Beck and his brother Dan. And tonight, Lord, we lift up my wife's mom, my mother-in-law, Elizabeth Stefano. Lord. Thank you. First of all, Lord, just thank you for moving her from that place where she was to Altoona, bringing her back home. And Father, we just ask that you give the doctors and the nurses and the medical staff the wisdom that they need everything that they need to be able to kind of help her and to um, make her whole again, Lord, to, to, to just heal her, Lord. Because, you know, we know that she, we heard her voice and we're so, so grateful for that. And so, Lord, we also lift up tonight Darlene Blunt smeek Lois Rhodes, Sonny Schaefer, Zach Turner, Lord Joanne Mock and her family, and Joyce uh, Cawther and Garland. And our dear friends, uh, Jordan and Robin Phillips and their business and their family. Alan and Jen Gallagher and their family. Uh, Paul Kalabov and his family and his, his work, Lord. I just lift him up to you. I know he has an interview coming up, Lord. I just ask that you just bless that, Lord. And open doors that may be closed for him, Lord, but also be with him with his ministry, Lord, and his family. And tonight we lift up Carrie and Kevin Prusnak and their family, the Snyder family, Marvin and Vicki and April. And tonight, Lord, we just lift up Michelle, who is struggling with stage four cancer, fighting that. And Buzz and Deb Stell, Megan DeGaulle and her daughter, Mia Grace. Tyler Magaha and his family. Edie Elizabeth Johnson Lowe and her family. The Rudisills, John and Linda. We just lift them up to you. And Father, we also lift up Josh Jacobs and his family. Eli, Owen, Amaya. And just everyone in his life, Lord, continue to keep working, continue to just work on Megan as well, Lord. And just continue to draw him, Josh, closer to you. And we place in your hands, Lord, also uh, Peggy and Joseph Stupio and their ongoing health issues. The McGee family, Warren and Holly and the kids. Victoria and Chris Wilson and their kids and continue to guide them in their new marriage. Uh, Sheila Fenny and her family, and Charles Gilliard and his family. We also pray and lift up Julie Hercheck and Julie's family, Glenna and, and Don Rabenstein, Tina and her husband Jose and the kids, Diana Walls and Steve Stevens and Dean Brando, and his wife. 
Joe Biddle, Nathan Slippy, Chris Cross. And Father, we lift up the Berry family tonight, Ralph and Christine, Tyler and Braden and Jordan. And Lord, we just lift up also Sally. Lord, we pray for Sally tonight, Lord, that you continue to, to work in her body to keep her strong, to keep her healed, Lord, to keep cancer and anything else away from her, Lord. And her sister, Peggy, who is battling cancer. And we also include the Russell family, Lord. We just lift them up to you tonight. And Lawrence and Kayla Rissler and their family. And we also are, are praying, Lord, for uh, our dear church member, Vincent Mucol and his family, and Lillian Castro and Oakland and baby Lorenzo. Lord, we know that Vincent is currently dealing with some health issues. Lord, we just ask for healing. We just ask for your touch on his body, Lord. Uh, strengthen him. Give him the ability to be able to get up and walk, to have no pain, Lord. We thank you for that. And we lift up Paul and Cindy Johnson, Pastor Paul and Cindy, asking for your guidance and protection for their kids and their grandkids. Aaron Bomeisel and her Sunday Kwan, and, and Lord, just all of the Bomeisel family, uh, we just lift them up to you tonight. John and Kathy, Laura and Mary Ellen, And Father, tonight I remember and, and, and just lift up Anthony English and his wife, Polly. We ask, Lord, that you continue to take the pain away that he has in his lungs. Lord, continue to heal him, to restore him, Lord. We love him very, very much. We miss him dearly. Uh, and we look forward to seeing him again. Hope he can be at church on Sunday. And also, Lord, uh, Gwen Fisher and her family and her sister Ingrid, who is fighting cancer and the Stotler family, Sandy and Tom, and the Harpster family. And I pray for Tammy Lingenfelder, Danny Campbell, Butch, and their family. And we also pray for Norma and the Stefano family, Robert and Cookie and, and Dave and Bernice, everyone in the Stefano side, we lift them up to you. Dave and Linda from our church. And I also pray for the Baptist Church of Seward, Pastor Rick, Pastor Heather, or Pastor Rick, wife Heather, right? Lord, and their kids and their and their family. Lord, we just lift them up to you. Lord, we love them. And Father, I want to lift up my family, my wife Angelina, and all that she's dealing with with her mom Liz, and and also my son Elliot and Becca, my uh, Elliot and, and my daughter-in-law Becca. And, and their family, the Miller family from, from Texas, Lord. I just um, ask that you continue to bless them, Lord, and just to protect them in everything that they're doing, Lord. I just thank you for all of the blessings that you're giving us tonight. And Father, we also pray for fellow pastors in our community. We ask for wisdom and strength as they guide their congregations. And we thank you, Lord, for also protecting our schools, our children, our teachers, our, our school staff. Lord, just continue to watch over them, to protect them. Praying for our missionaries tonight, Lord, who are overseas, who are sharing your light, who are sharing your message. And Lord, we also lift up the fire, the EMS, the police, those who are putting themselves in harm's way. We just pray for their protection, their safety. And for our military, for Israel, for the Middle East, and, and Lord, for our country, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given our country, Lord. And it seems like, Lord, you've uh, blessed us again with a new direction, Lord. And we are so thankful to heal our land, uh, for our people to seek righteousness, your word once more. Lord, thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for answering your, these prayers. And we trust in your grace to lighten our burdens, to fill us with your peace and strengthen our hope and faith. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. Thank you so much for everything. And, and tonight, you know, I hope you stayed and were able to pray, pray with me. Again, keep those folks in your prayers. Write them down. 
And I ask you to come visit our, our little church, Altoona First Southern Baptist Church. You know, we see ourselves as a big family. And we'd love for you to come just as you are. Our door is open uh, at 1045 this Sunday, 903 North 4th Street in Altoona. And you don't have to worry about dressing up. Come as you are. Help whatever you want to wear. Come as you are. Bring a friend or a neighbor along. And just like tonight, where we did ask the pastor, if you have a story to share, if you have a question to ask, or you just want to reach out, we're here for you. You can connect with us through our website, or you can send me a Facebook message. Um, you can also uh, contact us through a1sbc.org and send us a letter, also at uh, snail mail if you want. Pastor Don at 903 North 4th Street, Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16601. And if email is easier, feel free to contact me at donaldmast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to learn more about our church, I encourage you to visit our website. Or I think if you go up and you click on the little church logo, it'll take you to our Facebook page and you can learn more. We've been around since 1911. And so, you know, we're all about... Um, Reaching the lost and strengthening the saved, just like the Great Commission. Uh, just like Jesus taught us in the Great Commission. And so if you're exploring faith, if you're looking for a church, we hope you'll come and check us out. And Lord, also, I just lift up a friend of mine tonight. I just, I knew, I always forget to add certain folks to the prayer list. Um, Dylan Hench, I just, you know, friends, if you'll pray for Dylan Hench. Have him in your prayers, and, and Buzz and Deb Stell and their family, have them in your prayers as well. I thank you for listening tonight. Um, I hope you found this time to be uh, one where you're able to be closer to the Lord, to grow. Um, thank you so much for listening. I love you. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week, and I hope to see you on Sunday. Take care. See ya.